besties, welcome to the last episode of the Gleeful Talk Show for 2021. Since it's the holiday season, I'm going to share some zesty stories on how I spent the holiday season from the places I've been or lived. A trip around the world per se. Before we dive in, please do check out our Instagram, that's at Gleeful Talk Show, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also buy me a cup of coffee or two. Just head down to the episode notes to find out how. I'm also encouraging you Zesties to rate the show on your podcasting platform, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and Podchaser. It'll definitely help the show a lot. If you're a Netflix binge watcher, anime, or K-drama fan, please give Nerdy Fans Podcast a listen, where we geek out on some of the shows we've been watching. Yes, the holidays. Christmas, New Year, and everything in between. It's my second favorite season of the year, next to my birthday. And I have been lucky enough to spend the holidays in different parts of the world. It's a blessing and a curse, however you want to see it. Because in some parts of the world, it could be lonely not spending your holidays with your family and extended family. So let's make our first trip, of course to the Philippines where I was born and raised. I'm a 90s kid, so I'd say most of my memorable holidays were spent during my childhood days. Back in the day, kids in the Philippines used to sing Christmas carols around their neighborhood. We create our own musical instruments from tansan or like the cork or enclosure of that Coca-Cola or soda bottle. I'm not sure if that type of coca-cola bottle exists anymore but anyway we flatten those tansons and stack them together on a thick wooden stick by hammering down a nail through it judging by how i describe this it isn't really the safest thing to do and by today's standards i'd say kids don't try this at home so stacking those tansons together makes up your percussion instrument we sang a lot of Christmas carols and I'm definitely proud to say that we were one of those kids who took the effort to not sing the same song to your next door neighbor or the next door neighbor after you sang that Christmas carol from that household. Anyway, you get the gist. So we did have a set list ranging from Cebuano, Tagalog to English and even Spanish songs like Feliz Navidad. Ah, fun times. It was at that time when caroling was still a thing amongst households and if your gang is good enough, you wouldn't be shooed away by the house you're caroling on. It was around my elementary years and I even remember that there was a time when we went caroling in our neighborhood and we sang Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in one of the houses and they gave us 20 pesos. It was either 20 or 50 but it did feel extremely big at that time. The kid carolers normally are a band of playmates and sometimes if you are a big group, you divide yourselves into two. Then after you finish up for the night, you of course divide your earnings between yourselves. That was really fun. We normally do it a week or so prior to Christmas as we didn't want to go to the same house again just to save our faces. But some kids do it, unfortunately. Uh, but we weren't that thick face at that time, as you know. These are our neighbors. They see us almost every day. And although our subdivision at that time had a lot of people, we were still too shy to do so, you know. That was really fun, fun times indeed. So when I grew up in my teen years, I still did some caroling, but as my age upgraded, so did my instrument. So at that time, I played my guitar with some of my friends. Only a few houses in the neighborhood and some in the neighborhood of my classmates. We brought an envelope for the household to put in their donation. Very much upgraded experience, right? <laughs> there was a time that we caroled around because we are using the proceeds for a school play. If I remember that correctly. If it wasn't a school play, it was something that we needed to fund. 
But anyway, that was high school. When you get to college and you're already working, it feels like you're too old to do some caroling. Well, at least that was a notion back then. But I would do it if only I have someone with me. I love caroling and singing. But anyhow, most of those grown-up days, we were doing grown-up things like attending Christmas parties. A lot of Christmas parties. And unlike the rest of the world, we take our work Christmas parties in the Philippines very seriously. There was even a time that I wore a wig because, a pink wig for that fact, because we had a theme of fire and ice. (laughs) What I love about Christmas is really that vibe, that feeling of anticipation for the birthday of Christ. And that entails Misa de Gallo or Midnight Mass, or the Dawn Mass. Giving gifts, loads of them to your family and loved ones. Spending time with your loved ones. And of course, the festivities including watching Christmas movies. The air just feels so different during Christmas and the New Year season. So up next, we fly to Dubai. I spent almost three years in Dubai, and even if it's a Muslim country, It has a very big expat community, especially Filipinos. So the malls are decorated with numerous and bright Christmas lights. Everything about Dubai is to the next level of luxury. So imagine the decors to be over the top too. Spending Christmas in Dubai isn't as different as how it's spent in the Philippines, especially if you're with a bunch of Filipino friends. In terms of how it's celebrated with your Filipino friends, Not much of a difference except for the quantity. For example, I have only a few Filipino friends there compared to the Philippines. So we held our Christmas parties intimately amongst ourselves. And it was only like four of us. Can you imagine? (laughs) I'm not that outgoing and extrovert type either. So it's definitely hard for me to find new ones that I trust enough to spend the holidays with. So I spent it with my most trusted friends there where they come to our flat and we do a pretty simple Christmas party doing exchange gifts and whatnot and a simple meal. In terms of how I spent it with my loved one, we usually go to a fancy restaurant that time of the year as a treat. Back then, we lived in an area called Dubai Marina and there were some fancy restaurants over there just a stone's throw away from our apartment. So I dress up, which really makes me happy, and we go on a Christmas date. There was one cocktail that really tickled my taste buds, which I couldn't find anywhere else. It was a limited edition at the Atelier N, where it's an alcohol concoction with a dash of cinnamon in it. It was pretty unique and tasty at the same time. Never in my life have I tasted another cocktail like that. So if you happen to spend your Christmas in Dubai, do check out some fancy restaurants and try out their Christmas cocktails. Now let's go to Europe, one of my favorite places in the world. When we moved to Australia from Dubai, we spent our first Christmas in Europe. Pretty odd, huh? Because Australia is very far from everything and it's like a whole new world down here. We didn't get to go on holidays during Christmas time when we were in Dubai because most, if not all companies, had a calendar year and closing, unlike in Australia. So, alas, I had my chance to really spend a European Christmas where everything feels so magical. We first landed in Vienna and I have some relatives there so we spent Christmas Eve and some few other days during the holidays. This was prior to COVID so imagine a world with no restrictions. Aww. It seems so distant now, huh? Anyway, we went to the famous Christmas markets of Vienna in front of their city hall. You get charmed by the delicious aromas, bright Christmas lights, and the unique backdrop of architecture. There's also a Christmas market at Schönbrunn Palace. Definitely, definitely a delightful and unique experience as well. I couldn't choose between both. 
I visited Schönbrunn before on a summer season and seeing it in a different light is quite an experience. I shared some of my European experience at an episode on Banana Cube podcast as well, so please do check that out too. Apparently, my aunt uses a real pine tree as a Christmas tree as well as a real candle. I know, I know, it's indeed a fire hazard. That's why they always have a bucket near the tree as a precaution. Unlike your usual Christmas lights, Using a real candle as light do not really give you the luxury of lighting it for a long time. However, the beauty and the aroma of the real stuff takes you to a different place. Budapest is just 2.5 away by car from Vienna. So we stopped by my mother-in-law's house on Christmas Day. And I initially thought that Europeans always use a real pine tree, but it looks like it's just a case-by-case basis. Budapest is also famous for its Christmas market. It looks and feels familiar with Vienna, which is comforting to me. Feeling at home, right? (laughs) It was very cold, so you would need a good old mulled wine to heat you up. It's a wine that's heated with some spices and all things nice. They also served one of my favorite Hungarian bread, or might be my favorite Hungarian bread, the Kurtos Kalaksh. After all these years, pronouncing this is a hit or miss for me, so I I apologize if I pronounce that wrongly. Just like my married surname, I couldn't even pronounce it correctly. I'm just going to take you through quick trips in Europe now so you wouldn't be as bored. So next up, Tromsø. Tromsø is in northern Norway and is the 12th most populous municipality in the country. It is the largest urban area in northern Norway and the third largest north of the Arctic Circle. We went there for a couple of things and one of the highlights was to chase the drum roll please. Northern Lights. The day we went there, the sky was quite cloudy so the northern lights were quite shy as well. Not to fret that much because maybe I'll come again next time to see a much more better view of it. Tromsø, I'd say, is a very cute place. I'm not sure whether it's just because it's Christmas, but it's very cozy and the streets are very cute amidst the coldness of the weather. There, I officially experienced snow, like thick snow. We went up, I don't know how to pronounce this, Phil Heisen Peak through a cable car and from there you can see the picturesque cityscape. Such an incredible experience. Now we quickly go to Rovaniemi, Finland where Santa lives. (laughs) If you decide to go to Finland for Christmas, please try at least for once in a lifetime sleeping at the Arctic Snow Hotel and Glass Igloo. The glass igloo is where, obviously, the igloo is in glass, but thankfully, only the ceiling. So you can view the night sky. The snow hotel is really a snow hotel. (laughs) If you zesties would like to see some photos on Instagram, please share this episode on your IG story and tag me so I would know. Anyway, it was really cold. The actual hotel is carved from snow each year where you sleep on a transparent bed made of snow and ice. They say even it's carbon neutral. The walls and furniture surfaces of the unique rooms are decorated with ice art and illuminated artwork. The temperature is at 0 to negative 5 degrees Celsius, but we are using the sleeping bags intended for extreme conditions combined with reindeer furs included in the hotel. So if in case you cannot sleep, there is a separate heated room adjacent to the ice hotel. But I mean, if you're already there, might as well take it all in, right? Again, another once-in-a-lifetime experience. If Rovaniemi doesn't ring a bell for you, maybe the word Lapland will. The Arctic Circle Santa Claus Village is just a bus away from the snow hotel where you will meet Santa Claus and his reindeers. 
There are a lot of fun activities there like husky excursions and Lapland safaris. But I just went there to see Santa and experience the whole place, the whole magical place. There is also a post office where you can write to your future self or basically anyone. They have their own stamp as well, so it's a bit pricey but a very special experience. We also went to Denmark and definitely fell in love with it. I might do a separate episode about it sometime soon. Eventually. Now we fly back to Australia, my new home. And since Australia is in the southern hemisphere, it has an opposite climate than in the north, so it's summer down here during Christmas time. So during the COVID times, I get to spend my Christmas in summer and we couldn't go out of Australia or even Brisbane or Queensland at all. It's definitely different here than other parts of the world in terms of spending your Christmas. We go to beach and have barbie or barbecue for Australian slang. I'm very fortunate to live in a subtropical city so the weather is quite easy here. My Christmas isn't always as fancy as everything I shared now and it's just a collection of one of my fondest Christmas memories. In fact, after my European Christmas trip, I have a lot of hurdles and extreme struggles due to the failing health of my parents. So Christmas isn't always as grand as it used to be. Even now, the struggle is real and you know, with all the typhoon hitting the Philippines, it's quite a struggle and sad experience. Even now, the struggle is still there. So I hope you Zesties understand that it's not fitting to share it in public, but what I wanted to let you know is that life always has its ups and downs, even if it's Christmas or the holiday season. So you don't have to be always happy. And like seasons where it's their summer, winter, spring, fall, it does change. Sometimes the struggle or the winter in your life is quite long, but do hold on because nothing is permanent. The world turns around its axis and revolves around the sun no matter what. Except if there's an apocalypse. <laughs> Kidding aside, I did watch Don't Look Up on Netflix. It's pretty good and I might review that one on the Nerdy Fans podcast. Anyway, Zesties, I hope you find this episode interesting, hopeful, and insightful as I intended it to be. I wish you a hopeful and prosperous new year ahead. Thanks for listening to the show this past year and see you next year. 